I don't know if you know this, Thor News is for winners, and that's why you're here. So stick around. We've got a video message. I'm gonna have to science the shit out of this. Hit the button, baby. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Party Dance Time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am sad and in a bad mood. Why am I sad? Because of everything. Why am I in a bad mood? Because I'm sad. So with that note, let's get to something nonsensical, hilarious, and mildly irrelevant. Or who knows, maybe it's the most important thing right now. Did you know a computer algorithm can spot a drunken tweeter? Okay, great. Perfect. No, seriously. It was brought to us by Discover. Science for the curious. Selfie land. All right, let me start off. For people who are new to life, or Earth. You see, they invented this thing called the Internet, which is like a magic spider web that spins across the world. And one of the tendrils of this computer spider web is the thing called Twitter. It's part of the multi hydra artificial intelligence information gathering programs we call social networking. You know, like Facebook, Instagram, even your PlayStation 4, where they want to know where you are, what are you doing. I have access to your microphone. I have access to your camera. I'm watching everything you do in every type of lighting. So when the war comes between the robots and the humans, you won't stand a chance. All right, so Twitter's this thing where the computer needed to break down all the structural norms of society, where grown men and women used to grow up aspiring to write the great American novel. And if you don't know what that is, it's a book. Back in the day, men and women used to write books that were amazing works of art that would change and inspire millions of people's lives to be better, to be smarter, to be stronger, to be more forgiving. But they don't make those anymore, really. Now they got social networking. And the modern American great novel is the tweet, where on the interwebs, in 140 characters or less, you say the ultimate snark, nihilist thing you can think of to win the game. And I guess I've heard it's kind of like Tinder for adults who fancy themselves poets. Hey, you're a snarky nihilist tweeter with a heart of gold? So am I. Let's bang. And so it's like Hemingway. Hemingway only wrote one sentence. I use Twitter, usually when I'm angry. It's a good way for me to show the world that I'm not perfect. Drunk tweets, long considered an unfortunate yet ubiquitous byproduct of the social media age have finally been put to good use. Wait, what? I wonder if they have algorithms that can spot hot tweets or LSD trippin' tweets. Cause those would be the ones I'd like to read. <laughs> what about cocaine tweets? Can't recognize Adderall tweets? Like, is it just drunk? Is drunk the only one the computer can recognize? Maybe now if a cop pulls you over, he'll be like, all right, tweet five times, and then we'll have the algorithm run it to see if you're drunk. With the help of a machine learning algorithm, researchers from the University of Rochester cross-referenced tweets mentioning alcohol consumption with geotagging information to broadly analyze human drinking behavior. Wait, so let me get this straight. Their wonderful supercomputer is basically pegged. People talking about drinking at the time are saying, oh my God, I'm drunk. Are drunken tweets? This is genius. This is total genius at work. Holy shit, the Nobel Peace Prize race for 2016 is so crowded. First gravitational waves, then, then strange activity on planet Ceres. And now, dudes run a program that can spot tweets that say, whoa, I'm buzzing hardcore, man. And the geotagging is basically saying, are they at a McDonald's or are they at a bar? Because if they're at a bar, there's a 95% chance they're drinking. If they're at a McDonald's, there's only 25% chance they're drinking. So once again, not that impressed. This doesn't sound like artificial intelligence. This just sounds like word search. They were able to estimate where and when people imbibed, and to a limited extent, how they behaved under the influence. All right, now like your standard stuffy PhD scientists, they do their science in the lab. With the computer, me as a screenwriter, a more mystical school of science. I like to do my research with my boots on the ground. If I want to know where people go to drink, I put my boots on the ground and I go find out. 
and give me one month in any city in the world, I can find the best bar there. Because like Hemingway, I got a bit of a bar fly in me. Not too much, but good enough to understand where people drink and how they behave when they're drinking. So can I have PhD? Man, I thought this video would be funnier. The experiment is more of a social critique. The algorithm helps researchers spot drinking patterns that can inform public health decisions and could be applied to a range of other human behaviors. What? The experiment is more of a social critique. I don't know, like, I mean, I understand that sense, but it don't make no damn sense. Hashtag drunk tweeting. I think you're supposed to put hashtag drunk tweeting without space. Go home, article, you are drunk. Go home, people of Earth, you're drunk. Go home, digital, you are drunk. Come back, analog, I miss you. Dating was so much more fun before cell phone. Do you remember rushing home to your answer machine to see if that light was blinking? I do. You remember standing there when it was blinking? You were waiting on a pretty girl's call. You got home and it was blinking and you'd stand there for like 30 seconds just enjoying it like you'd won the lottery. Anyway, the 90s were fucking awesome, man. When the 9-11 happened, shit went down how fast. And I think we're still falling. Into the great wide open. All right, to begin with, the researchers sorted through a selection of tweets from both New York City and rural New York City with the help of Amazon's Mechanical Turk using identified tweets related to drinking and picked out keywords such as drunk, vodka, and get wasted to train the algorithm. Get wasted. See, I'm a Viking. So when I drink, it's not to get wasted. It's to get awesomer. I highly recommend getting shit-faced like once every six months just to clear out your mental and personal attic. But, you know, do it smart. Like, stay home and don't call your exes and don't do any dumb shit. I'm a good drunk, man. I get crazier and more random. They put each relevant tweet through a series of increasingly stringent questions to home in on tweets that not only referenced the author drinking, but indicated that they were doing so while sending the tweet. That way, they could determine whether a person was actually tweeting and drinking or just sending tweets about drinking. Okay, so they put each relevant tweet through a series of increasingly stringent questions to hone in on tweets that not only reference drinking at the exact time, but that they were doing so while sending the tweet. So yeah, like, this whole article is about scientists who figured out that people said, I'm drinking, we're drinking. What they spent on this, a billion dollars? Was this sponsored by the James Webb Space Telescope? Uh, they figured out that people who tweeted, man, I wish I was not at work. I wish I was out drinking. We're not drinking. Or people who tweeted, I'm at work, but I wish I was wasted. They were not drinking. They were not drinking at the moment. To get tweeters' locations, they used only tweets that had been geotagged with Twitter's check-in feature. They then approximated users' home locations by checking where they were when they sent the tweets in the evenings. In addition to tweets containing the words like, home or bed. This let them know whether users preferred to drink at home or out at bars or restaurants. All right, yeah, so I would guess like 50% of all tweets between midnight to 3 a.m. involve some type of drinking. All right, here we have a cool map chart. All those mofos are drinking. All those mofos are drinking. Wait, let me guess. People in rural places and suburban places drink more at home or at homes. And people in the city drink more at bars. Wow, that's genius. Wish I could have conducted that study. Heat maps show where people were drinking and tweeting tweets. In New York City, the drinking hotspots are Lower Manhattan and its surroundings. Whoa, no way. That is crazy. In Monroe County, they are downtown Rochester and the city of Brockport are the places where people grab to drink. Man, who wrote this? I don't even know if I can finish this one. Combining these two data sets gave the researchers a broad idea of how many people in a given area or at a given time were drinking. Not surprisingly, they found a correlation between the number of bars and how much people drank. More bars meant more drunk people. This is wild. It's almost like saying, if you got a place that has like 100 restaurants, you're going to have more people eating than in a place that doesn't have any restaurants. That's crazy. Gee, science, don't raise the bar too high. New York saw a stronger correlation between the two, proving that people in the big city really do like to drink more. Okay, first of all, that is not true, man, because Twitter is like a city folk thing. It's like an echo chamber. You got a bunch of birds chirping into a Dixie cup so that my guarantee you country boys can drink and country boys will survive. You know what I'm saying? Just cause country boys ain't tweeting about how much fun they're having or how that guy's glasses look horrible on him. Doesn't mean they ain't drinking. You know what I'm saying? Dumb scientists. Goofball scientists. Why don't you leave your lab every once in a while? Pocket protector Pete. Their work builds on previous studies that attempted 
to tie people's tweets to specific activities and locations. By using the check-in feature, that's the feature that's like, do you want everyone to know where you are and how cool you are? Please check in. They say that their system is much more accurate than others and can reliably place people within a block of their actual location. They publish their work on the preprint server at Ziv. This research paper may be a wonderful read, but it sounds like one hell of a turd of a scientific study. Apparently, Thor of Thor News knows way more about drinking and drinking spots than scientists and all their algorithms. Twitter offers a rich data set to the NSA, the CIA, the FBI, ExxonMobil, Goldman Sachs, McDonald's, AT&T, Sprint, Time Warner Cable, In-N-Out Burger, and Mossad Get Happy. Knowing just how many people are drunk at any given time may be entertaining, but researchers say this experiment was meant to prove that an algorithm could track a broad range of behaviors using widely available data. Yeah, but like we could take it the other way and go into the whole, like I said, the artificial intelligence is set up a plan to map out everything it can know about human beings, their actions, and what they would do and how they would do it. So scientists are doing everything they can to help out Sears Skynet. And hey, who could blame them? Everybody wants spot in the people's zoo. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Other actions that people record on Twitter, such as eating, shopping, or exercising, are possible targets for machine learning algorithms to comb through and analyze. Potentially, anything with an associated hashtag or keyword could be tracked. There are a few obvious drawbacks to using Twitter as a source of behavioral information, however. One, uh, Twitter seems to be dominated by egocentrists, I think. Because, like, I used to use Twitter because, uh, one, for earthquakes and world news, it really seemed like the ultimate super fast local reporting tool. And then uh, I started to uh, use it because you could say something clever to any beautiful woman with a Twitter account you wanted to across the world. But then I got a girlfriend, Sage. And I don't do that anymore. I don't even really use Twitter anymore. Now Twitter, like, every time I see it, it causes me pain for some reason. I'm a nobody on Twitter. People even make fun of me, like, you only have 1,000 people following you on Twitter. You're nobody. Nobody gives a shit what you think. And I'm like, I know. I know. I know. I am utterly unimpressive. It's like you guys are living in a fantasy world. That's okay. I do that too. But what ifs? All right. Peace out. We're ever having a romance. Now we're a Twitter Tinder world. All right. Peace out. I'm going to go be sad. Build a time machine or some shit. It's a weird world, man. It's a weird world.